Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back to DSP versus the Internet, episode 59. We're now heading into part three. We're still into the Ultra Member submissions, meaning the biggest supporters of this channel submitting clips, and they're guaranteed to be watched every week. So I hope that you guys are enjoying. Let's continue on with the Ultra Member submissions before we get to the more common ones. All right, cool. And uh, <clears throat> awesome. Here we go. Guys, in today's video, I'm going to tell you how I managed to keep a job at McDonald's with an IQ of 70. Um, if you're one of my regular viewers, you'll know that I used to have a very low IQ. I have been working on it for the last year and a half. I've been rehabilitating myself, but in April 2019... This is one year ago. Wow, this guy had almost 2 million views on this video. So a guy, this guy had a really low IQ, and now he's working on trying to get smart. Interesting. Okay, let's see, hear his story. Um, yeah, I just got fired from a job uh, in construction. I worked as an apprentice carpenter for one week and I got fired. All right, so that was a bit of a setback, but I didn't want to keep me down. I didn't want to let that minor setback keep me down. So I did some research. I, I knew at this point that, you know, I had a very low IQ and it was holding me back. It's actually funny. Uh, low quality video in 2019. Yeah, this is this is a video from what? One or two years ago. And look at the quality. So I wonder what the hell he's using to even film it. Even a phone would be better than this today. I wonder what this is being filmed with. So, you know, I did some research and I researched fast food jobs and I read somewhere on Quora that you'd either have to like get caught stealing from the company or not show up for shifts in order to get fired from a job like fast food. So <laughs> I said, right, I've got a chance here. Because the standards are so low in fast food, I have a chance of keeping, <laughs> getting a job and keeping a job. Now my goal was sim was not to get promoted or be good at my job. It was simply to keep a job yeah. in fast food to get my contract extended at the end of the three month probation. Okay, and um, I think a lot of it comes down to mentality. All right, so my mentality was, you know, even if even if I don't get my contract extended at the end of this three month probation period, um, that's fine. I'm not going to give up. I'm gonna I'll get a job at a different <coughs> McDonald's restaurant and I'll give myself another three months to get the hang of the job because. In um in Ireland we have things this thing called um, a three month probation period. If you get a job, you basically have three months to get the hang of the job. And if you haven't got the hang of the job at the end at the end of those three months, the company gets rid of you. If you have got the hang of the job at the end of the three months, they keep you on. So so yeah, that was that was my mentality. You know, if you get fired, if I get fired from McDonald's, Cark Mines, get a job at a different McDonald's, and give myself an extra three months to get the hang of the job. What's funny is he, you know, claiming he has such a low IQ, and he says he's working on it. He's he's articulate. He's intelligent, intelligent, articulate. He can, you know, express himself fine. I'm shocked to hear that he has such a low IQ if he's able to talk like this on camera with no problems. Weird. All right. <clears throat> so the thing is, like most people, if they got fired from McDonald's after three months, they'd say, "Oh, it's not my thing. I'm not able for this," you know. And that's that's the mentality that keeps people down. Okay. Um. So I got the job at McDonald's. Um. I knew it was going to be a struggle. It was a struggle, more of a struggle than I thought it would be. The work was very difficult. I was trained on chicken batch and grill, and they're probably like the easiest stations in McDonald's. Not um apart from the lobby, but you know, I found them very difficult. It took me ages. To get the hang of um, basic concepts like um, which tray do the chicken nuggets go into, which tray do the chicken selects go into, and stuff like that, and also speed. Can you keep up on a busy day? Can you mm. keep up on a Saturday? You know, can you keep the man going? Um, you know, and I, I worked very hard, and um, things went well. You know, um, mm. at the end of my three-month probation period, um, I was called into the office. Um, you know, the uh, store manager at McDonald's gave me my three-month probation. He's um, review. He said, um, "You're not the best. You're not the worst. Um, you know, you struggle with the pace in the kitchen, but so I think we're going to give you, um, we're going to make you do more cleaning tasks from now on." And um, you know, so it wasn't a great performance review by any means, but I got my contract extended, so I was delighted. You know, that, that was what my goal was when I um, got a job. When I first got that job at McDonald's, just keep the job, get the contract extended. And I managed to do that. And it was difficult, um, you know, it was head wrecking. Um, I get migraines at the end of every shift. Yeah. Um, you know, and because it took me so long to get the hang of chicken batch and grill, they would just keep me on those two stations and lobby. So when I was working at McDonald's Cark Mines, I don't you'd only ever see me on three stations chicken batch, grill and the lobby. Okay. Um 
now I work in a different McDonald's um, and um, you know I've been working on my IQ for the last year and a half so of course my IQ is higher I find the, find the job easier um, you know I'm able to do fries now I'm able to do the line handy enough and um, yeah that's one mistake I made when I got, first got the job at McDonald's in Cark Mines um, I feel like I should have worked on my IQ as well um, on the side so as I mentioned before all I had to do was read for 20 minutes a day to improve my IQ so yeah I would have worked on my IQ as well as work at McDonald's if I could go back in time but you can't I don't think there's anything too you know <clears throat> there's nothing too crazy or profound about this video it's just a simple story right but at least it shows that some of these jobs that are considered repetitive tasks can be learned even by someone who isn't necessarily very smart right it's an interesting story but it's not like like I said I didn't learn anything from it or anything all right, the next video I believe is more of this crazy bicycling or unicycling. Oh my god! All right, just just to be safe, I'm gonna turn off the music again because remember they put music to this, and a lot of the times the music gets claimed. So I'm just gonna mute this portion of the video, but we'll watch it. The crazy unicycling. <clears throat> this is dude. This is getting crazier every week. So first they were unicycling in the forest, and I was like, dude, they're gonna kill themselves. Then we saw bicycling in a cave system. I was like, dude, if you <laughs> How can you stop yourself? Now they're just going, this is wild at this point. Like, look what they're doing. On a mountain. They're doing, this is like parkour and unicycling together, right? It's not even just unicycling at this point. It's like, they're they're literally going out of their way to do crazy stuff. Look at this. This is, why would you want to unicycle there? <laughs> look at this. Spin, oh, look at that. Spins around and is able to still maintain balance. It's crazy. Super tricks. I was just going to say that you could probably go to a normal skate park and use it just like a uh, like a unicycle park, too. It might be a little more tricky, but you probably still do the same stuff, right? <clears throat> wow, what, a, what is that? Like a four or five spin? That's crazy amount of spins. Whoa, 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 how many was that? That was like six. <laughs> Insanity. Oh, but again, the only thing is, this must hurt. Wouldn't this not hurt your crotch? Like, you're constantly landing on that pad, smashing into your crotch. That's got to hurt like hell. Not even like your balls, but just hitting your bones and shit down there over and over. I don't know, man. Unless you just get so used to it, you build up a resistance to the pain or something. I don't know, but... Feels like you crush yourself in the crotch over and over. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. The balance, the precision. That's cool. It's it's cool to watch, but man, again, I would never be doing crazy shit like this. I have zero desire to be one of these crazy thrill seekers. Do you see what they're doing? They're gliding down the rail on the pedals. That's neat. They're doing using the pedal to give them the the slide down those. Look at that. You can land on the side of it and still maintain the balance. So they spin it and they land on the side of it. Whoa! He, he, that was a cool one. He pedaled in, in midair. That one was pretty neat. Landing backwards. Whoa, wow. Precision. Precision jumps. That's, again, I like, I, those are interesting because you never really see shit like that, right? It's just something completely out there that I wouldn't even be exposed to. And it's entertaining uh, watching it. Now, hold on because I muted. Oh, I muted the, uh, I muted because it, it was having music in it. And I didn't know if the music was licensed or not. But it was neat. It was neat to watch. The next one to warn everyone is Street Fighter Six stuff. Regarding the best Zenki player in the world, Snake Eyes, who I've played and he completely whooped me. He was amazing to play against. Um, I guess, you know, how he played well at a, a tournament. Was it Capcom oh, Cup? Yeah. Basically, some tech he showed at Capcom Cup X. It's two minutes. Let's see. It's funny. Of course, I watched this now the day after playing Zengi online. But it is what it is. 
I can tell your friend. I see that, bro. He was a pixel away from the three bars. As like, soon as that drive rush came in, I was like, no, down. bro, he run, run. It's like a horror movie. Or like a horror story. Let's Terrible frame rate. Oh. Oh, this man's wake up to put him to sleep for a little bit. Maybe too early. Oh, oh man. Yeah, the crowd is coming alive now. They're loving the SPD party. The drive rush. Yeah, he finishes the combo with the uh, heavy kick jackknife. Gives some frame advantage after the forward dashes. Zengi's booty SPD doesn't have any invincibility. Right. So it has to be perfectly timed. Right, and he loses to his throw. So what did he do? So did, Nam did Namikaze mess it up? No, the two dashes and throw timing were perfect. So what happened? Somehow Snake Eyes evades the throw. How did he do it? The timing is different. At the point where the throw should connect, Snake Eyes didn't do ODSPD yet. Okay. Instead, Snake Eyes was jumping. So he canceled a jump animation into an OD SPD by holding up. It it changes the timing. So this is a technique maybe I should use. When I'm waking up, jump out of it and then cancel into a different move. He jumped to avoid the throw first, then canceled the pre-jump frames to OD SPD. This is jump cancel SPD. You cannot rely on reversal input buffer. You have to hold up for the jump first, then press punch at the perfect timing. Whoa. Not only that, Snake Eyes got the right read. But he perfected the, perfect the timing for jump control SPD too. Too early on the throw. Yeah, the crowd is coming alive now. They're loving right. the SPD party. Oh. The oh, but Snake Eyes now running away with this. So, just to give you guys some perspective, all right, got to be insanely good timing because you have to read that someone's going to be in your face going for that throw, and then you have to do a move that's going to be unthrowable. Jump is unthrowable. So he's initiating a move. That's going to be unthrowable. But he's immediately canceling that unthrowable move into a second move. So it gets the properties of a jump, but then becomes a different move. So the timing has to be incredibly strict. Because if you don't do it right, you get the jump instead. Which is not what you want, because then they can punish that jump. So he's perfected timing of being able to wake up off the ground and start a jump and interrupt the jump with an SPD or probably another move too. He's probably got all his timings down. That's why he's the best Zangief in the world. Very few people <clears throat> are going to master that level of gameplay um, with a character like that too, who's low tier. Uh, Snake Eyes, if you if you remember, at the time that I was starting as a YouTuber, he was becoming prominent in the Super Turbo scene. He as a Zangief player, and I think he was actually playing in and placing well at or winning. Uh, uh, like a Super Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix tournaments as Zengi. Because the name is familiar, I looked into it and I found matches of him playing HD Remix. I'm like, oh yeah, now I remember this guy. He was very prominent back then. He was, he was was That was his up-and-coming game was HD Remix. And then after that, he started translating that gameplay into Zengief in other games. And now he's like the best Zengief in the world, you know, in any competitive game. <clears throat> Pretty cool. That, I mean, something like that takes so much practice. I probably have to sit there and time it and just practice it entire days to get that down. I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Plus online, here's the thing. He just did that offline. Good luck getting anything like that to work in an online match. Never. The timing's too strict. And online is so bad with these games. You, know, you never get that timing correct. <laughs> so that was awesome. Okay. I think this is our last Ultra Member video coming up. History of Earth in brief. Okay. Wow, 160 degrees Celsius. Yikes, that's hot.
the DNA world. This is how the planet would have looked during these different eras. Look, that grass very green. <laughs> The first continent form. Cool. <clears throat> the first ice age. Look at the temperature. 11 degrees Celsius. The first oxygen forming in the atmosphere. This is going to change everything, I'm sure. The great oxygenation events. This is going to give us our atmosphere... And, but it causes mass extinction to all the microscopic life. Another ice age. Ah, here you go. Mitochondria and complex symbiosis. Still, still very small organisms. <coughs> Finally, the first multicellular organisms about fungi and algae. <coughs> There was one super continent. Snowball Earth. So it froze again. This is another ice age. It causes mass extinction again. Heads and tails. First complex animals here. Cool. Another mass extinction. But we don't even know what caused it. Wow. <laughs> Complex eyes, predation, anthropods, and cephalopods. Another mass extinction. Dude, so the, the planet is just in a constant cycle of getting too hot or too cold and having a mass extinction. <clears throat> Vertebrates, first plants, first reefs. Rising oxygen levels. Ice house event, mass extinction. Oh my god. Eurypterids, jawed fish. The age of fishes. <laughs> and the first insects. Oh, look, a mass extinction because of a greenhouse effect. Age of forest, carbon deposits, amphibians, and amniotes. Elevated oxygen. <clears throat> Pangea supercontinent. This is the one that you, you heard reference Pangea a lot, right? Oh, look, it's going to be another extinction. The Great Di Dying. Mass extinction. Oxygen collapse. Another greenhouse event. Age of reptiles being born. Pterosaurs. First mammals were born. Another mass extinction. <laughs> so if, if you haven't noticed, there's always going to be either a freeze or a greenhouse event that's going to cause a mass extinction. And then the, the Earth resets. It's kind of an endless cycle of resetting. And I think what people are saying when they say things like, oh, our pollution or our gases are causing a greenhouse event, effect, uh, event or a greenhouse effect and it's going to ruin the planet. It's not that it's going to ruin the planet. It's that we're accelerating the next mass extinction. It's bound to happen. There's going to be a mass extinction. But the thing is, how soon does it happen, right? How soon until the next one, you see? That's really what it is. It's not that we're destroying the planet. It's that we're accelerating the next reset. The first birds. Now we're going into more modern continents. Tyrannosaurus, Titanosaurus, Mosasaurus. Is that perhaps the meteor that hit the planet? Mass extinction because of an asteroid impact and global winter. Here's our modern continents. Age of mammals, cetaceans, primates, terror birds. Mammoths, megalodons, hominy, hom hominins. Isn't this supposed to be hominids? I think it's supposed to be hominids. It's spelled wrong. Here it is. Glacians, hominids, tool use. 
Homo sapiens. Cultural evolution. Revolution. Industrial revolution. Greenhouse event. Yup. They're saying is that it's un it's gonna happen. The greenhouse event is coming. That's gonna make us basically make us extinct. Or at the very least, change our way of life. I guess what a lot of people are uh guessing will happen is that we're basically gonna have to become like a subterranean species. We're gonna have to build giant ways to live under the ground until the earth resets. And once the earth resets, then we can go back to the surface. Because it's gonna have to go through this era of the greenhouse effect and everything being too hot and fucked up until it cools down again, you know? Hmm. Okay. Um, we still have time. That was it. That's all the Ultra Member submissions for the week. <clears throat> so we can actually switch over to the Standard Member submissions now. But let me get that playlist open. Hold on one sec. Uh, here it is. Hit shuffle. This one, so, no, wow, another fighting game thing. Um, so this one is uh, Maximilian a few months ago. I think it was like two months ago, one month ago, two months ago. He made a video, and the video is basically, what is happening to MK1? Why is MK1's player base running away? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to fast forward through his intro because it's this big elaborate thing. Um, here's the deal with, with MK. It's always the same cycle with Mortal Kombat, Okay. The game comes out and it's hot, white hot popular. Everyone talks about it. Everyone wants it. Everyone runs out and buys it. In fact, these Mortal Kombat regularly outsells both Street Fighter and Tekken 8. <clears throat> but that's because it's popular for various reasons like the gore, right? After a month or two passes and everyone who has bought it has played it and played through the story and messed around online, the entire player base falls off and the game dies almost entirely. This is why if you look at tournament series, Usually, Mortal Kombat will be around for like a year or two tops, and then it's like, it's dead. Nobody cares about Mortal Kombat after the first year. Traditionally, sadly, Mortal Kombat is not really balanced, okay? It's just not meant to be the more serious fighting game. Now, NetherRealm has tried in, in previous iterations, like that last one, not, not MK1, but what was it, MK11? They did try to make it more tournament serious and have longevity, it still didn't work. Even with all the gameplay mechanic tweaks they did and everything, people just kind of give up on it after a few months. There is a community for it, but it's way smaller than the other competitive community. So it's funny, even though Mortal Kombat gets initial sales that are much higher than other games, the sales completely drop off and no one plays it or buys it after a few months, while these other games do have longevity. They'll have people buying them seasonally, getting seasonal update passes, playing in tournaments, sponsorships, partnerships, and things around the games. So, even though you might say, well, MK1 is a big sales hit, you're right, but it's a flash-in-the-pan success that always goes away right away. Okay? So, I'm curious what Max is going to say because my take is, this is literally what happens with every single Mortal Kombat. It never changes. It's the endless cycle of Mortal Kombat's hype for a month, two months, and then people realize it's not a very good game, and then they stop playing it competitively, and only casuals are left, and then that dies out, and it's dead. Every You'll get a little bit of hype when a DLC character comes out, and then that's it. It'll just get dropped. Okay? So, let's see. You ready? Let's see what he has to say. I'm curious. What the hell? I noticed pretty fast as go. well. And I also noticed this back in MK11, much less also um, in Justice two obviously nrs games have a huge casual audience the shelf life of like what's enjoyable to watch in the game will last like a little while super made the same observation i did and he he, he really likes the game like i do i actually really enjoy this game to solidify my stance for anybody that's curious my feelings of mk1 what's going on in the community right now with it which is pretty wild i enjoy the game I actually really do. It's just that I'm still waiting on a character and the characters that I have played and the ones I've eventually settled on is like Havoc. Even though Havoc is cool and I, I'm, I'm enjoying my time with him, the only character of the entire roster that I wanted to go back and play. So I'm definitely in a character crisis. So anyway, long story short, new characters came out. I try him and Quan Chi's really not for me. So I just don't come back because it's like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to kind of wait on hope that Takeda or Ermac is fun. Because again, my stance is that I didn't like MK11 as a game and it had crazy cool characters. 
Now, uh, I think MK1 is a great game, but it just doesn't have characters I want to play yet. So anyway, Super made the observation that people just kind of dropped off like really hard. The amount of people like watching MK1 just in general between tournaments or just overall viewership, everyone just sort of lost interest really fast. So there's a couple of things to, to boil that down to. And it's the fact that every previous NRS game is a pretty big casual draw at the start and then eventually right. it teeters out. Completely MK1 correct. seemingly lost a huge amount of its casual audience, I'd say, in the first few weeks. Yeah. How did that happen? MK1 just didn't have the features MK11 had. MK11 was a game that just had characters people liked more, amount of content that was worth playing more. And what happens in that situation? Well, you get folks that are, you know, not super big on fighting games, but they kind of like this one because it has stuff that they like in it. And they're going to watch streams and they're going to check out the game and see how it's doing. For perspective, how much does this game sell? It sells more than Street Fighter VI. Yes. It's selling just fine. But will it overall go on to be a better, like a bigger game than MK11 or even MKX? I don't think so. I was saying this before, I think this is the first NRS game that's gonna like falter, that's gonna like stumble a bit. That's kind of happened, right? Where people just don't as much enjoy watching the game and the overall interest in either new DLC characters or general gameplay of the game is sort of like gone down. And that's exactly what Super was saying. He has a big amount of audience that just love NRS games and they just watch his stuff. But the majority of perspective was like, people just lost interest because there was no content. And people didn't like the microtransaction stuff and people didn't like how buggy the game was and- Right, keep in mind at launch, MK1 was broken. We didn't even know that the game was completely unbalanced for two weeks and then they had to patch it to fix it. Player one and two weren't equal. It was a, literally a broken competitive fighting game. Why would you play it, right? Um, no, for me, it's the same thing that I said when the game came out. The game engine is a step back. Instead of being a step forward, like Street Fighter VI is a huge step forward for Street Fighter with the amount of complexity in the game engine. MK1 is a step back. They removed complex complexities they added in MK11 and made it more simple, but not as fun to play because it's so simple. The online connections are terrible compared to other fighting games. MK1 by far has the worst online play between that, Street Fighter VI, and Tekken 8, which were all released within a six month period. It's just way inferior, super laggy matches compared to the other games. Why would it have longevity? It, I told you, I felt like this one, MK1, was not an attempt to make a good Mortal Kombat. It was just an attempt to make a game to make some money quick so they could fund something and make the next game. Because remember, they were alternating for a while between Mortal Kombat, Injustice, Mortal Kombat, Injustice. All of a sudden, no Injustice 3. So what's going on? Oh, quick, rush this other Mortal Kombat out so we can at least have some money coming in and then we'll work on the next big game or something afterward, right? That's what it seems like to me. It doesn't seem like the effort was really put into Mortal Kombat 1 at all. It's kind of an afterthought wedged in game so they could release something to generate revenue. It just doesn't have... The, the longevity of anything else. Like, it has that board game mode or whatever, but I don't think that board game mode is as good as, say, the Crypt, where the Crypt is a little bit more interesting with exploration and kind of funny, silly stuff in it. Um, the, the campaign was not as good as Mortal Kombat 9, 10, or 11, right? The campaign was in way inferior, terrible writing. Um, and as for the gameplay, it's just not as good. I mean, everything about it is inferior. The only thing better is maybe the graphics. That's it. Everything else sucked, so... It's not surprising to see that the game fell off. I don't think that Max is saying anything different than anything that I've said. And people didn't like that. The online takes forever to find matches, which is still easily one of the worst parts of the game that I go online and it's hard to actually play this game. Yep. I'm seeing it all in my chat right now. And people have been saying overnight that the game's kind of boring to watch. And I was feeling that way with obviously MK11. It is. MK11 a is a really game. dry game to watch. But this game gives you more stuff per character. Again, you consider it's when you look at Street Fighter 6, it's a flashy game with great visuals and tons of stuff that can happen at any time. Tekken 8, same thing, flashy combos and everything. This game is like, there's a high-low mix-up and an assist that comes out, and you do one combo. That's the game. It's so boring. It's a fucking boring-ass game. They didn't make it any kind of, of, of... There's no hook to playing it. It's just kind of a one-trick pony game. It's super boring. For this a team game, I think it just got figured out kind of fast. The stuff that's really good in the game kind of boils the game plan down to something relatively simplistic. The game sort of moves at a snail's pace. That never changed too much. I think we just got used to the fact that MK1 from the earlier versions that we played, the general interaction of the game is kind of slow. It doesn't have as much zoning as previous NRS games for sure, but overall movement and attack speed is is really 50% slower than previous games. We all know MKX is a fast game. We don't even to say, need to say that. But MK11, it, it speeds the hell up, dude. It's actually really fast. 
when you go back and you look at it now. So it's kind of crazy. Complement all of that shit with like a cameo system that gets figured out pretty quick. A lot of casual well, yeah. fans for NRS games do not like the team stuff. They do not like the fact that you have multiple characters. And this is another thing that's echoed in his, like the comments of his video. People don't like that it's a team game. They don't want to have to like learn this stuff. They just want a 1v1 fighting game and they hope the cameos get removed from the game type stuff. Uh, from an overall perspective of like the casual perspective, which is the huge majority of people that will remain interested in MK, it feels like they're just burned out. And the word of mouth for MK1 isn't generally good. It isn't come with like a huge positivity. I feel like the, the best word of mouth for MK is that the game plays fun. And that's where I'm at, where it's like, yeah, I really enjoy the game. I've played it, I played it for like, you know, a couple months, man, where we were just roaming the roster and figuring stuff out. Took a break from Street Fighter. But now, like, as I went and played a few more fighting games over the past month and came back to MK after a big hiatus of this. So it's like, okay, let's go see what MK1 is like. Yeah, dude, the, the problems of this game are pretty obvious. Like just playing it is kind of rough. And if people are dedicating their time to playing invasions and shit, that stuff is a slog, man. Like that's- So essentially he's completely echoing everything I said. The only difference is I said it in the first two weeks the game was out. I, I acknowledged all of these problems two weeks into the game's life cycle. The online play is the worst. The game is too slow paced. It's a simpletons game. It's just a cameo system that's boring. It's a huge step back from MK10 and 11 because they removed a bunch of stuff. It's not as fun to play. It's unbalanced. Like everything I, that he's saying, I already said in fucking, what was it, September when the game came out? But again, here's the problem. And I hate to say this. It's not just Max, but it's everyone in the FGC. They have to get so hype over every new release because that's what prints them money. You have to understand that. Okay. It's not just him. I'm not calling him out. It's the entire FGC. When a new fighting game comes out, they have to act like it's the best fucking thing ever because it prints them money. They want people coming to their streams, going to their tournaments, hovering their stuff. You see what I mean? Me, I don't care if I call out a game in the first two weeks because I have a million other things I can do. I don't care if MK1 got traction on my channel or not. After playing it for two weeks, I got bored. I said, I'm not playing this anymore. The game's terrible. And then I went back to Street Fighter VI. I mean, Tekken, I liked. I played for o over a month, right? About a month, month and a half. Because it's a very good game. But MK1, I got so bored right away. It's just not a good game. These people have to shill. They have to say the game is good. They have to go back to it. They have to check out DLC characters because this is where their bread and butter is coming from. And it sucks because instead of getting honesty from the FGC, you get people who say the game is great and then people rush out and buy it and then it's not good. Like, for example, Mortal Kombat 1 would not sell as well as it did if the FG FGC didn't shill it. But it's this endless cycle of they shill it for a little bit, and then they don't care about it after a while. So why did you shill it? Because you wanted that initial big wave of views and popularity in your content. It's dumb. We all know NetherRealm games are far inferior to other fighting game franchises. They always have been. They're more for that casual audience to go play because there's gore. It's a party game. I put it with my friends. So then stop fucking acting like it's a serious game and taking it seriously and having people buy it and then it, then now no one plays it, right? It, has like, it had like insane amount of sales and no one fucking plays the game now. So all those sales were wasted money. <laughs> you know, like what the hell? Those sales could have went to other better games or other better, better fighting games, you know, that would have longevity. But no, we have to have our your quick gratification of get those views, get the shilling out, make the money. I didn't shill shit. I bought it, I thought the story sucked. The online play was atrocious. The characters weren't interesting. The game was unbalanced. The gameplay was boring and simpleton shit. Like, I said that the first week it was out. And I said, fuck this game. I'm not wasting time on it anymore. Let's do better things. But that's not what the FGC does. It's sad. I wish they did. Because <clears throat> here's him making this video back in, what was this, February? Right? I said that in September. And it all stands true. It was all correct. All right, guys. Anyway, good stuff. And uh, let's move on. We're going to continue on with these standard member submissions. Well, excuse me, these submission tier level submissions in a sec. But thanks for watching the show, and I'll see you in the next part.